Hello, my name is Levi, or Leviathan FPV, and this is the build video for the Newbie Drone Whirly Gig. The version I'll be building today is the 4-inch Endurance HD Edition. You can reference this video for the 3 and the 5-inch versions as well. I'll be building this Whirly Gig with the Cadex Vista, Newbie Drone 1404 3000 KV flow motors, and the Newbie Drone 20x20 F7 Cricket stack, as well as a TBS GPS module. First thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the arms to the base plate. Please note the front and the back of the base plate because the arms are not the same. The narrower and longer arms are for the rear and the shorter, wider arms are for the front. You'll need two of the short and four of the long included M3 screws. The short screws go in the center holes and the long on each arm with the aluminum air unit standoffs as the nuts. Please be aware that the arms have a divot cut out for the motor shaft and these will need to be facing up. Next, install the flight controller stack hardware and fit it to your 4-in-1 ESC. Screw down the nut, but leave it loose so we can adjust where the ESC will sit front to back. Apply pressure to the ESC in the position on the bottom plate you want while you finish securing the nuts. The rubber gummy should hold the nuts enough for you to complete the tightening. Now I will solder on the power lead to the flight controller. Remember, always pre-tin your solder joints. Just a side note, most will recommend that you use flux when soldering to get the best results, but when you're experienced at soldering and or using good solder, it's not necessary in my experience. Since I'm going to have the power leads come out the sides, I will solder one wire to the top and one to the bottom of the ESC. Next, solder the capacitor to the positive and ground of the ESC. Note that the negative side of the capacitor is labeled, so make sure you don't get it wrong or it will pop. Now, I'll solder the XT30 connector to the power leads. I'm purposely gonna leave one wire shorter than the other to help the lead rest pointing in the up position. It helps keep the connector away from the props while in flight. Be sure to add shrink tube to your leads so you don't short the battery on the carbon. Now fit the ESC onto the frame. Next, let's install the motors. Again, these are the Newbie Drone 1404 3000 KV flow motors. Remember to add a bit of Loctite to the screws, which I did not do here. I like to straighten the motor wires and then zip tie them to the arms to keep them nice and taut. It also helps with cutting the wires to length and soldering them. Cutting the wires to length can be a bit tricky because if you cut the wires too short, you have to add wire back on and that will kind of ruin the clean look. It's better to cut a bit too long and adjust if necessary. After your wires are cut to length, go ahead and solder them up. Order doesn't really matter because you'll need to set the motor direction and be all heli later anyways.
Repeat with all motors. Next, I will install the Cadex Vista. I've already soldered the wires to the flight controller and made sure that the length was good. There are two sets of holes in the back of the frame. One is for M3 and the other is for M2. If your M2 screw heads are wide enough, which they normally are, you can use the M2 screws in the M3 slots to mount your Vista. Otherwise, the outer two holes are M2, and if you unscrew the outer M2 screws holding the Vista together, you could use these. I haven't personally tried that, but I have seen it done. Now you can plug the ESC to flight controller wire into the ESC. Next, you can install the flight controller. Note the arrow pointing forward on the flight controller as this is pointing to the forward direction. Although it's not necessary to set that to forward position because it can be adjusted, it's usually the optimal way to install for wiring purposes. I'm not using any nuts to hold down the ESC because the rubber grommets on the flight controller are tall enough that they will not touch. Here is when I install the Cadex Vista to the flight controller. The connector for the video has two more pins than the Vista or DJI air unit, so be sure to connect it properly just omitting the two unneeded pins. The red wire should be on the side of the 9 volt label of the flight controller. Then secure the FC with the retaining nuts. I keep pressure on the flight controller when screwing down the nuts so that when I release the pressure, they should be perfectly secure. Whether using a GPS slash antenna mount or just the antenna mount, grab the two longer M2 standoffs and insert them. Then secure the standoffs to the base plate in the back and attach the Cadex antenna. Now I'll solder up the GPS module to either the UART 2 or 3, 5 volt and ground. Remember that the TX wire of the GPS should go on the RX of the UART and vice versa. Lastly, I will attach the DJI camera. I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this, but this is how I like. This is the front, and it sits on the side of the frame like this. So you'll take both camera plates and slide them onto the top plate on both sides. Next, slide the camera in. Note on the back of the DJI camera, it has a triangle indicating the up direction. Line up the holes for the camera and screw in the M2 screws. Next, you'll install the remaining standoffs. There are four in total. Now just add the rest of the screws to the top plate and your build is done.
The only thing left to do is BLHeli and Betaflight configuration and finally binding. Thank you for watching and have fun flying. Like always, don't forget to spin those motors.